Utility sleds aren't something I think about on a daily basis. The functionality that they offer isn't something I need. A snowmobile for me is just a toy. But for a large number of people, a snowmobile is so much more than a toy. It's a tool they use day to day to help them get jobs done more easily in the snow. There are countless different purposes for a utility snowmobile, from collecting firewood, forest management, trapping, farming, ice fishing, even on a horse ranch. But what makes the perfect utility sled? Why does the market offer utility sleds from 550 fan cold all the way up to 800 cc liquids? What do you actually need? This all depends on two factors. First, what you need to do with the sled. And second, what size of sled you're comfortable with. A small person isn't likely gonna be as comfortable working with an 800 cc utility sled as they would be with a 400. Likewise, if you're hauling ice fish huts or other super heavy loads, a 400 may not be the best choice. But if you're working around a hobby farm, it's perfect, as we're about to see. I'm Charlotte, I'm a registered nurse, and on the side I own a hobby farm. So I have two horses and then two mini horses. So on the farm, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. We usually use a four-wheeler for the job, but in the winter, kind of hard to do with all the snow. So it's nice to have a sled around to clear trails. I don't have an indoor arena, so the trails is the only way I can keep the horses fit. I wouldn't describe Charlotte as a big person. She's small and she's lightweight, which means a big utility sled could be a handful for her day in and day out. Luckily for her, Yamaha has the answer with the Transporter Lite. So the Transporter Lite makes it a little bit easier on me, somebody who's maybe newer to sledding. I'm not really that confident on trails. The sled itself is smaller. Um, it's not overly powerful, but powerful enough that it can get through the deep snow. And so it's just easier for someone like me, who's maybe newer at this, to kind of maneuver and, and get through the trails. A couple things I like about the Transporter Lite is that it's an electric start, so I don't have to pull start it, which makes it easier for me. It also has a push button reverse, so you can just easily get it into reverse and maneuver it where you'd want it to go. The Transporter Lite is different from any other utility sled on the market, thanks to its 397cc semi-direct injected single cylinder two-stroke engine that puts out a claimed 65 horsepower. Where other entry-level utility sleds are still using fan-cooled and carbureted engines that require a choke to start and smoke like crazy, Yamaha's Transporter Lite starts easily, idles perfect, and creates almost no smoke at all. It never loads up when you leave it idling for a while, and it's surprisingly good on both fuel and oil. Many would assume that a big 397cc single would be a vibration factory, but a counterbalancer helps smooth things out big time. I will say that at idle, there is still some noticeable vibration, but once you get the RPMs up, it goes away almost completely. Light, small, and capable were the three main targets for the Transporter Light, and Yamaha has done a great job of hitting all three. But there are a few things that we think could use some attention, and Charlotte agrees. So the only thing I really notice is that the hand warmers on the sled get a little bit too hot, so I constantly have to be turning them off and on. I couldn't agree more. The hot grips and thumb warmer on the Transporter Lite have two settings, off and nuclear. There's no way a switch with three positions, including a low setting, could cost more than a few pennies. The only other thing I think the Transporter Lite could use is a sway bar. No, it's not designed for high-speed trail riding, but other than in the mountains, there aren't any scenarios where I think a sway bar would be a negative on a sled like this. The dimensions of the Transporter Lite are interesting. Technically, it's three-quarter size, which means it is smaller than a full-size sled. It also features a 38-inch wide front end, which, while narrow by full-size sled standards, doesn't actually feel bad on the Transporter Lite. The most interesting part about the dimensions and specs of this sled, though, are the three-quarter size combined with the track and skid frame. Out back, you're gonna find a 146 skid with an articulated rail wrapped in a 15 wide by 146 long track with a 1.6 lug. Now, this is a serious sneaker for a mid-size sled, but that 397cc single does a great job of handling it, and the flotation and traction are insane. Ergonomically, the Transporter also sports downsized dimensions. They're not so small that a large person can't use it, but they're definitely tailored to a smaller size rider. So one thing I really appreciate about this sled is that other sleds that I've ridden, I've noticed that I struggle with my light weight to turn the sled and to maneuver it in sharp corners and things like that, whereas the Transporter Light seems to turn a little bit and maneuver better with my small size. 
If it seems like we like the transporter light around here, it's because we do. It does things in a way other sleds don't. It offers functionality for smaller riders that could previously only be found in vintage sleds like an old Tundra or Bravo LT, but it doesn't skimp on the technology and fuel efficiency of any modern snowmobile. So honestly, I would go out and purchase the sled for myself personally, just because it's great on the trails, I can maneuver it, but then I can also use it around the farm and doing the chores for the horses and making trails so that I can continue to ride my horses through the winter. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.